Hello, Cancer. Welcome to January 2022. Also, welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys are the first of the month that I'm going to be working with for the monthly readings. I am so excited to be bringing these back to the channel. Um, a, a little bit of background. I'm doing your reading first because it is Monday. Today is Monday, January 3rd. And Monday, uh, when in association with the planets, Monday is uh, correlated to the moon. Um, and the moon is your ruling planet. So I'm going to be working with the days of the week that correspond to the planets for the signs. And that's when I will be recording your readings. At least that's what we're going to do this month and see how that works. Yes. There go the roosters. <laughs> if you can hear them. I don't know if you can hear them. Um, hopefully you can't. I do have some music playing in the background. Um, it is from the Lo-Fi Girl YouTube channel. I will try to remember to post the link to that channel in the description box below. It has been such a vibe for me. I've been really work using it like at night, you know, as the sun is going down and I'm, I'm winding down and, you know, I'm making some dinner and I'm enjoying my home time, my fourth house energy, yes, which is your house, the house of cancer, the fourth house. Um, I found that playing this music in the background really helps me to settle in and to chill. And so that's what I want to do for the collective here as I'm doing these readings. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. Welcome. Please make sure to like this video if it resonates with you. That'll help the algorithm. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonates for you. Just say hi if you're new especially. And if you're new, definitely go ahead and consider smashing that subscribe button. Yeah. All right. We're going to get into the month for you. Um, and what I want to do is I want to kind of start by talking about the astrology a little bit. And then we're just going to move forward and get into a bulk of the cards and the reading here. This is a general reading, so please keep that in mind. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. When I'm talking about the astrology, I am speaking specifically to Cancer rising, okay? Because in terms of that, that is how your chart is most likely going to be what's what it's really going to look like the, the rising sign sets the tone of the chart sets the house placements and all that kind of stuff of course that could still resonate for you even if you're not a cancer rising but that's going to be the most effective also if you're new here when i talk about astrology i talk about it from the sidereal the true sidereal point of view which takes ophiuchus into account which is the biggest thing um, but that also does change the placements okay so even if you're not familiar with sidereal astrology just i encourage you to sit and tune in and just listen and see how it resonates for you of course if the astrology part of it doesn't resonate for you i would recommend staying for the more general card aspect of the monthly reading yeah all right let's get into this cancer um the vibe that i have for you this month is some sort of uh character development and most of that comes from what's going on in the sky and how that's affecting your chart. So we're going to look at the astrology first. What you have here on your screen is the chart for a Cancer rising in terms of sidereal astrology for the month of January. Okay, And as you can see, for my Cancer risings here, there is a ton of energy in your 5th, 6th, and 7th house. And that's going to seem to be the big focus for you this month as the planets make their transits. Um, and this is where I'm getting this kind of character development feel. And why is that? Okay, so let's explore. Um, as you can see, the sun is right here right now in your sixth house in Sagittarius. Um, and Venus is making her transit, her retrograde motion right now through your sixth house. Um, and mars here which is another big focal point is making its transit his transit excuse me through your fifth house now a big focus uh, uh, some of the the big astrological things that i really want to talk about this month for all of the signs is not only just the new moon which we had yesterday uh january 2nd um there is a common theme throughout the year of the new moons kind of starting us off on each damn near pretty much in each month okay so every month it seems like we as the collective are going to have uh, a prime opportunity to really set some intentions in motion and i'm already feeling like 
you should pay close attention to what happens between the new and the full moon. By the time you reach the full moon, I feel like you'll have a lot of understanding for you to then maybe restart or reshape your process once we get back to the new moon, because the new moon is a time of setting intentions and planting seeds, right? So we started the month of January with a new moon. Um, even if you're watching this later on, like after the new moon, like maybe a week after the new moon or, new moon or whatever, you can still kind of tap into those energies. Spirit um, really wants us to understand that, yes, we can definitely work with the planetary system and the moon cycles and all that, but really your intention is what is the most important here. So if you can link up with the moon cycles, that would be even greater, especially for you, Cancer, because you the moon rules your sign. But also, at any moment, you can really set an intention and get it to work out for yourself, okay? But uh, the new moon st started out the month. Then the other two, well, I guess we should call it three. But the other transits that I really want to place focus on is the conjunction uh, between Venus and Pluto, which is an ongoing theme for us throughout the winter season that does involve mars as well but that comes later um but then also the full well i'll say the transit of mars um i feel like is heavily affecting all of us right now mars is one of the personal planets so that's definitely something you want to pay attention to when you're speaking to yourself personally right uh, but then also the last thing that i really want to call our attention to is the full moon which is on january 17th so let me advance the chart here this is today, January 3rd. We're going to move forward here. The sun makes a conjunction with Pluto on the 16th, this day. All right. As you can see on the 16th, around 6 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, we have the conjunction, the exact conjunction between Pluto and the sun. Cancer, this is also happening in your sixth house. All right. And this is right around the time of the full moon, which is uh, exact on the next day. Okay, the 17th. The 17th is the day of the full moon. Now, why is this important? Uh, first of all, the moon is your ruling planet. Moon cycles are really heavy for you, most likely. Or the transits of the moon are really heavy for you, most likely. Uh, but the conjunction between the sun and Pluto, um, number one, isn't all that major. It does happen once a year, uh, at least. Pluto is a bit is a far is the furthest planet. So Pluto takes the longest time to transit through this house system here. So the sun conjuncts with Pluto at least once a year. But I feel like this is a really important thing for us at this time because of everything else that is happening here. Now the conjunction between the sun and Pluto uh, what I'm hearing for you Cancer is this is bringing soul revelations for you and like I said the the general vibe that i feel for you this month is a bit of character development and what's happened with 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 the fact that mars is transiting through your fifth house which is technically ruled by leo but your fifth house or your fifth house is the house of your self-expression creativity fun excitement maybe even sometimes adventure it's the house of your children or your inner child it's the house of self-expression and mars is transiting through your fifth house this month it started out in Scorpio, which I feel like is bringing a lot of things up from the depths for you here. In terms of, sorry, hold on. In terms of your masculine energy, but in terms of also your drive, okay, your action, what did it takes, what it is you take action towards. And as I'm speaking to that, the Page of Cups just came out. So what I'm feeling here for you, Cancer, is yes, this sense, this sense of character development, this sense of character readjustment, action readjustment, masculine energy readjustment for you. Um, and ultimately, I feel like this is definitely going to affect you in terms of your interpersonal relationships, because after this conjunction between the sun and Pluto and this full moon, the sun will be moving into Capricorn which is transiting through your seventh house. So I feel like whatever comes up for you, whatever changes you make, whatever apologies you may need to make or whatever apologies you may need to accept, this also could represent some sort of reconciliation here with, with this page of cups energy. 
whatever this is, I feel like it's going to carry over and translate into some energies between you and other people or interpersonally, maybe some legal matters as the moon moves, I'm sorry, as the sun moves into your seventh house. I just feel like you're going to be able to carry this energy with you and really relate to people in a very different way. And this is actually a big thing for the whole collective right now, especially because Venus is in retrograde moving through Sagittarius. Now, the main focus for you, Cancer rising at least, of course, this could resonate for anybody with Cancerian energy or strong Cancerian energy or a Cancerian affinity. Uh, but the strong thing for my Cancer Risings, at least, is this is mainly happening. This The full moon, this, I'm sorry, the sun is in your sixth house, the moon is in the twelfth house, okay? But the sun is in the sixth house, the conjunction between the sun and Pluto is in the sixth house. Venus is transiting through your sixth house. The sixth house rule is ruled by Virgo. Mer uh, Mercury rules Virgo. Mercury is in your seventh house. Bam, there you go. Okay, so there's that other aspect of the interpersonal situation here. But with all of this happening, especially with Venus transiting retrograde through your sixth house right now, throughout this month, um, there is a level of, I'm hearing and feeling, taking responsibility for something. Uh, and this could very well translate into your health and your wellness. I was getting some this feeling for you, Cancer, of like there's some sort of responsibility that you're needing to take on. But the thing about this is that this responsibility may feel like it's being imposed upon you. Um, and, it, and it feels like it may be imposed upon you, Cancer, because of the conjunction between Sun and Pluto. Any sort of transit with Pluto often... Um, I'm hearing brings deep and relevant and potent revelations, but it also tends to show up in a way that absolutely cannot be denied. So there's, it feels like there's something here that's coming up in terms of your health and your wellness, maybe even your responsibilities, your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your routines, okay? This could even re translate really into your business and finance aspects because it's an Virgo is earth and earth tends to relate to that, but I mean, I'm really hearing your health and your wellness. Um, so this is the health of your physical body. This is your mental, your spiritual, your emotional health, but it's also for some of you, maybe for many of you, it's the health of your interpersonal relationships. And what I'm feeling here is that there is going to be some sort of stark realization or revelation potentially, especially with Mars moving through Scorpio and then into Ophiuchus, Scorpio being the energy of deep excavation, Ophiuchus being an energy of healing and transformation. I feel like there's going to be a big transformation in your action. I'm also hearing in the way that you perceive of things, but um, the way you respond, the way you interact, the way you engage, and it, it, it is going to feel, I mean, it already feels like it feels really deep, really heavy. It feels like it may come out of nowhere, potentially, especially with Pluto involved here. Um, it just feels like there's something that you need to be responsible for, or maybe more responsible for. I feel like taking some sort of responsibility for something is a big theme for you, Cancer, especially my Cancer risings here that definitely resonate with sidereal astrology, okay? I'm, I was also channeling that someone may feel emboldened to step up or stand up in some sort of way. And that's that Mars influence, especially since Mars is transiting through your fifth house, which is the house of self-expression and, and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Also, something like this may come up with your children. Some of you may realize that you have to change the way that you engage with your children, whether that's for the, the well, it would all be really for the better, but whether that is coming out of some sort of negative association, negative sort of action oriented way of handling or dealing with your children or children in general, maybe even your inner child. Or in some cases, it could be you might have to be a little bit more stern. You might have to put a little bit more of that masculine structure in place, okay? Um, this could be really deeply healing for your family, for your interpersonal relationships here. There also could be some sort of healing that comes up for you, Cancer, in terms of your inner child or maybe your childhood, recognizing how you may be able to reparent yourself during this time. For 
I keep wanting to say for better or for worse, but it would always be for better. So whether it was worse in the past and now it's getting better, that is definitely an aspect here, okay? But it definitely also feels like there's some sort of imposition and it doesn't have to really be all that much of an imposition. It just feels that way. And Cancer, you, you're a very sensitive sign. And I feel like sometimes these extreme structures or a need to place extreme structure into your life can feel debilitating for you. I feel a little bit of an apathy, a four of cups type of energy there. I don't really want to do it. I've never really wanted to do it. I've been avoiding this for so long, blah, blah, blah. This is the time to make that change, especially if you're consciously aware of how this needs to change already. Definitely tap into the new moon energy to set that intention to, to plant that seed so that by the time the full moon comes, when this actual conjunction hits between the sun and Pluto, you have a good step a good step forward. You have a good place to take action from. Um, you have a leg up. You have a almost like a head start. Okay. So as I'm talking through this, you do have, let me change the scene here so that you guys can see the cards a little better. But as I'm talking through this right now, Cancer, first you had the page of cups that came out, which to me is talking about a new emotional reality. Um, the page of cups is also giving me an energy of reconciliation yes but like maybe even falling back maybe someone taking a step back not fighting any longer not arguing about it any longer not having an ego battle about it any longer five of wands in reverse and instead taking a more gracious energy and maybe even saying okay i'm sorry or i didn't see it that way or let's reconcile let's fix this let's let's heal because underneath the deck right now, you do have the Eight of Pentacles. Underneath that is the Page of Swords to the Ace of Cups. All right, so this... Now, I want to make it very clear, Cancer, that it doesn't necessarily just have to be you that is feeling this personally. I mean, obviously, if you're a Cancer rising here, all right, this is going to be affecting you personally. But I'm also getting that this could be affecting the people around you. This could be, especially if, like, you're a cross-watcher, okay? So maybe if you're the cross-watcher, you're watching for a Cancerian maybe they could be going through this maybe they could have be having this revelation but if you're the cancerian here this also could translate into somebody in your life that is agreeing to i'm hearing step aside and maybe let you lead or maybe let some sort of reconciliation come in there is an energy here with the eight of pentacles the page of swords and the ace of cups there's love compassion maybe even new love for you guys okay so a change in your relationships your romantic relationships if you have a significant other there could be a desire to seek ways to work on it to fix things to improve things and that's coming from a sense of love unconditional love acceptance with that ace of cups and then here you are cancer the chariot but then the chariot to the fool there is an energy here for you cancer this month again especially for my cancer risings that puts you into greater alignment the chariot some uh, oh wow okay this could really be translating to your home and your family life some of you really could be healing a lot of family drama from your childhood but whatever it is you're healing here whatever it is you're rectifying or your your um clearing up whatever character development you seem to be going through this month it's getting you into greater alignment and it's allowing you to take a leap of faith from a place that is inspired the page of i'm sorry the fool the eighth the fool the knight of wands okay but then also ace of wands king of swords and the emperor all right inspired knowing which way direction to go being clear-minded looking at things from an objective point of view and then being some sort of authority figure or at least holding your authority in your life to really make these changes happen the emperor the emperor also translates into that martian energy right because the emperor represents aries aries is ruled by mars mars is transiting through your fifth house for my cancer risings this month there is a change in your action there is a change in your sense of direction there is a change in your character development okay um, this is also this also could be translating into you again for my cancer rising speaking in terms of the astrology this also could be translating into being of service in some way let's go back to the chart because the sixth house right here the sixth house here 
which you have Sagittarian in, Sagittarius in, right? And all of this Sagittarius, like Sagittarius is a huge energy for us this month. So there is a, a well, for the winter season. So um, as Venus is making her transit through Sagittarius. So big sixth house focus for you, okay? And the sixth house, yes, also translates into your health and wellness, your routines, but the sixth house is also how you are of service. Virgo is a very service-oriented energy. Virgo rules the sixth house. Now also, keep in mind, the ruler of Virgo, Virgo, which is Mercury, is up here in your seventh house, okay? In Capricorn, that really, I feel like, is going to help you to place this new structure to get this new structure in place, okay? With all this sixth house energy, which is ruled by Virgo, um, there is a refinement to your process that is happening this month. And with Mercury in Capricorn, uh, that is lending good structural energy. That's letting, uh, lending a good energy of momentum forward. Let's move this forward. Let's do the damn thing. Let's create something new. Capricorn, even though it is an earth sign, is still a, a cardinal sign, just like you, Cancer cardinal signs take action they move forward they create new things okay so on an emotional level on a mental level on a psychological level on a spiritual level this may feel quite challenging especially if you're going through some sort of strong egoic development or character development here but with the cardinal energy here of your own self plus mercury being in capricorn for you i feel like that's really going to help you move this forward again it may not it won't come without its difficulties but i feel like there's still going to be an ease of flow i want to say in terms of that but then also with capricorn well, actually, Saturn is also in Capricorn in your seventh house. So there's an extra form of structure that's putting a little pressure on you. <laughs> a little pressure. Okay. But that's also where a lot of this imposition feeling, this feeling like something is being imposed upon you is coming from. Let me tell you, though, Cancer, this new structure that is being placed into your life is good. It's beneficial for you. Flow with it. Work with it go with it okay but then also last thing i want to say here is mercury is in your seventh house seventh house is ruled by libra okay um and venus is also ruled by libra venus is moving retrograde through your sixth house in sagittarius okay so does it is it if, so if you're if you're astrology savvy this kind of makes sense right yeah okay but also uh, with that seventh house energy, that also brings your interpersonal relationships into focus, regardless of the fact that Venus is making this massive transit, right? Okay, Cancer. Excellent. So let's get into some more general energies. I just want to talk to the Cancerian collective, whether you are a sun, moon rising, you've got Venus in, in Cancer. I don't know, you, whatever, whatever. Let's just talk to Cancer Cancerian energy in general. Also keep in mind, again, this is a general reading, so we could be talking to the cross watcher as well. Yeah? Five shuffles. One. Actually, what I want to start with, I'm going to give this five shuffles, Cancer, but what I want to start with is the um, one of my new favorite decks. It's the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and I just want to get pull some general, some general energy here for you. And I'm also going to do my best to try and um, timestamp this. This is four. We have a card already. I'm going to do my best to try and timestamp this so that you guys can skip between um, the astrology part and then the general tarot part. All right, that's enough. I do have one card here that I want to look at that's come out while I was shuffling. It's the Eight of Cups, Cancer. This is a big theme for you. This is walking, this is literally walking away from things that no longer serve you, Cancer. All right. You have got to allow yourself to have the authoritative. Oh no, I don't have it with me. Hold on, I'll go get it. Um, you have to allow yourself to have the authoritate, the authority, okay, to walk away from things that no longer serve you. Really pull on what Mars, yeah, see at the bottom of the deck is the ace of swords. You know, or at least you're or at least it is you're about to find out. <laughs> what it is you're gonna need to do. Allow, really take advantage of what Mars is going through right now. Transiting through your fifth house from Scorpio, excavating deep things about your action orientation or your drive forward, moving into Ophiuchus, which then 
adds an energy to help heal that in terms or in ways that are necessary. Yeah. Pause for a second. Okay. Here we go. Oracle of the seven energies. I just want to get, I really, you guys, I really love this deck. This deck was provided to the channel by Carolyn. Very, very dear friend of mine. She's also a reader. She's an angel reader. If you're not familiar with her, Wisdom from the Angels here on YouTube, check her out. She's dope. But she sent this deck. It's the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and I've been using it lately, and I freaking love it. Let's give this one more shuffle for you, Cancer. And I, I, I kind of, I want to see what your overall theme is for the month. Yeah. So what, are, what messages do we have for Cancer? So you have, first card here you have is Earth Magic. It's card number one. Um, and this is relating to the Earth power. Um, Cancer, what's happening this month? However, it, however you resonate with it. What's happening this month, especially if you're feeling a lot of imposition, if you're feeling like you're really being forced to change a lot of the ways that you show up in the world, it's directly, directly related to what's going on on the Earth. Okay, this big transformation that Mother Gaia is really pushing humanity through. Okay, there is a method to the madness, I want to say. Allow yourself to really connect with the earth, flow with the earth, make sure to stay as grounded as you possibly can throughout this month or throughout these energies, whenever this is affecting you. Okay, um, staying grounded, Cancer, is really going to help you deal with those emotions that are coming up especially with this conjunction with Pluto and the sun, when I'm telling you, man, when Pluto comes to party, shit gets crazy. And it, it, it tends to show up in ways, Pluto tends to bring things out in ways that are just undeniable. Like it will stop you in your tracks and force you to focus on it and to deal with it right then and there, or at least it feels like it. You don't have to have it all figure it out in five minutes, you know, that's not reasonable, but it's still going to force you to face something. So ground yourself, tap into the magic of the earth. The mag the earth will help you transform, will help you transmute. If things are coming up for you that you really just need to release and let go of, go outside if it's possible for you or forever how long for however long you can stand it right because we are in the winter months here in the northern hemisphere but anyway get outside get your feet on the ground okay whether you're barefoot or not i don't care get your feet on the ground and ground yourself focus on all of those things that are coming up for you that are that are staring you slapping you punching you in the face collect them and send them down into the earth for transmutation. That's what Mother Earth does. That's what Gaia does. She takes that which needs to be transformed, released, decomposed, transmuted, and she uses it as nutrients for the new to grow. Ground yourself. Release. Allow yourself to release cancer. You don't have to hold on to these things any longer, and you know it. Okay, for some of you, this definitely translates into interpersonal relationships, the two of cups with justice. Stop fighting. Stop arguing. Stop it. Stop with the ego battles. Okay, stop trying to hold on to something that you know is not right for you any longer. Because that, my dear friend, is you stuck or settled into a comfort zone. Okay? Now... Next card that you have here, Cancer, that's come out from the Oracle of the Seven Angels is, I'm sorry, Seven Angels? Okay, tap into your angels. Angel number seven may be good for you. Okay, but uh, Oracle of the Seven Energies, it's close encounters. So this really does have a lot to do with your interpersonal relationships for many of you. All right, let's look into this a little bit more. Um, I'm feeling family, I'm feeling home life, I'm, healing, I'm feeling romance. I'm also feeling your children, potentially. All right, um, close encounters. What do we want to say to Cancer about this close encounters energy? Ten of Swords, Cancer. You've got to let some things go. You really, really have to let some things go here. 
two of wands see but you got to make a decision and what i'm feeling here cancer is that you haven't been making a decision you kind of you've been quite indecisive i feel like many of you in terms of these situations you've been stuck in some middle ground needing to make a decision and yep and not wanting to move four of cups it's time it's time to move forward it's time to let that go you've got you're going to be stuck and stagnant here as long as you choose not to make a decision and don't let me tell you what to do you can do whatever the hell it is you want but if you really want to move forward in life then you got to make a decision and you got to work with that you got to do that there you are again the chariot and what i'm getting with the chariot cancer is that you know what your alignment is or you know what your alignment needs to be how it needs to look what action steps you need to take to really get this alignment going, to really get yourself moving forward. Because you've been stuck for a while, haven't you? I'm kind of getting some um, hanged man in reverse energies. The hanged man, <clears throat> excuse me, the hanged man would represent a change in perspective. But the hanged man reverse represents having that perspective, but then not doing anything about it. It's time to do something about it, Cancer. And that's where this character development really comes into play for you here, okay? Okay. Um, love energies. I'm hearing the Love Oracle deck. All right. So this could be a continuation of your reading, um, in, but this could... This could just be general energies. This doesn't isn't necessarily a love section, but I definitely want to get into some of this because there's such a focus, a heavy focus on your interpersonal relationships. Okay. Last shuffle. So what messages do we have for Cancer from the Love Oracle deck for the month of January? Date is the first card out. You have Cupid's arrow. All right, so. <laughs> okay, so this definitely feels like an energy for my singles here. It doesn't have to be though. I mean, this could be for you if you've been in a relationship for a while that seems to have hit some sort of stagnancy, all right? There's new love coming in and I definitely felt that when the Ace of Cups came out um, as an overall energy in the past, um, but yeah. Yeah. All right, Cancer. So you, if you're really focused on love right now and romance, the next three months, January, February into March are a perfect time for you to transform the energies surrounding your romantic life. Why? Because Venus is retrograde right now. And there are many people that would say, oh, you don't want to get into relationships during a Venus retrograde. And I would agree, but I would also say that the transformational process that Venus moving retrograde through Sagittarius for us right now is actually providing us with a doorway to really get into alignment with the type of relationships that we want. And because of that, after all of this, after you move through this energy, you could find yourself lining up with someone that is so perfect for you. What do we have here? We have date, Cupid's arrow, hand of cards, okay, and then healing heart. So for some of you, quite frankly, for some of you, this could mean you could be going out on a date with someone in January. You could be meeting someone new. You be, could be getting yourself out there. You could be just exploring. This would actually be a good time for you with Venus being retrograde right now through your sixth house, through Sagittarius. This could be a really great time for you to get back out there, date a few people, have fun, have some drinks, blah, 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 whoop de whoop and all that boo shit, right? Do your thing and really focus on what happens. With Mars transiting through your fifth house of personal self-expression, through uh, Scorpio uh, bringing deep excavation forward um, into Ophiuchus, healing that action orientation, you could really get a great view as to how you need to change your actions in terms of your interpersonal relationships. So for my singles out there, this may be a really great time for you to get out there, especially if you haven't done so in a long time. If you've been out of the dating scene for a while, get back out there, meet a few people, have a few drinks, talk to people and observe. Observe the people that you attract. Observe the people that are attracted to you. Observe the people that you are attracted to. What happens with those people? 
Is it in alignment with what it is you want out of a relationship? Yes. Excellent. Keep going. If not, now we get to change that. You also have healing heart here. Okay. For my couples, especially if you have found yourself in a really stagnant place in your relationships, this could be a great time to change that, to transform that, to find the new love or the new passion in your relationships. But you have to be open to it. Okay. Both parties have to be open to it. I am feeling for some of you there, somebody's lying. Ooh, somebody's lying cancer about whether or not they want to be in a relation in this relationship with you. Don't take it personally. You have the Knight of Cups here. Don't take it personally. Um, okay. This is kind of some negative energies here. The Knight of Cups could be good, but the Knight of Cups could also represent someone that's emotionally, not as emotionally mature as you may want them to be. It also could represent someone that's in something for their own emotional gain. Now that doesn't have to be completely 100% sinister. It could be that they're just not emotionally mature enough or emotionally aware enough to understand how their actions are negatively affecting some other people. It also could be sinister. Okay. You could be dealing with, um, I, I hate, uh, for lack of a better term, you might be dealing with a narcissist who is just in it for some sort of emotional gain, all right? Uh, for their own emotional pleasure here. But then you have the Ace of Pentacles. What is this? With the Four of Swords in reverse. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, Cancer. So actually, what I'm picking up on here now is that you might be that one. You, Cancer, might be the individual that's playing around emotionally, that's not really being too serious. Others, for others of you, it could be this other person. Because what I'm getting here is that somebody does have an open heart. Knight of Cups. Somebody is also trying to make an offer to that, or maybe wanting to make some sort of commitment, a stronger commitment, or just offer something deeper to the relationship. But someone's been stalling. You have the Four of Swords in reverse. Somebody's been stalling. And Cancer, this may have may actually be you, okay? Because we were picking up on that energy that you got to make a decision here, right? With that, you have Judgment and the Queen of Swords, but the Queen of Swords is in reverse. It's time to make a decision, but you're adamantly, or somebody is adamantly stopping this. At the bottom of the deck here, Cancer, you do have the Two of Cups to the Three of Wands to the King of Pentacles. What I want to say here, whether this is for the Cancerian or this is for the or the or the or the Cross Watcher or the person you're dealing with is the one that's being indecisive here. Um, oh darn it! I just lost what I was going to say. Sorry about that. Um, I guess what I want to say is you have to focus on what it is you want. If you know what it is that you want, then stop playing around. And if you don't know what it is you want, then let the person go. Because I feel like somebody here does know what they want and they're willing to offer it. But you've got to, if, if that's not you, then if that's not you, then you've got to let that person go. If that is you and the other person is stalling, then you've got to let them go then you have got to let them go because now you have the three of pentacles to the wheel of fortune. And what I want to say with this is there is a cycle here of inactivity or not really working on it. And what I'm getting, and then you have the five of wands at the bottom of the deck. What I'm getting here, Cancer, is that you're in a, somebody here is in a cycle, um, an, a recurring cycle of being lined up with people that just don't want to be a team player or don't want to get on the same page as you. You don't force yourself to stay in that situation or the cycle is just going to keep repeating itself. And that's why here, some of you have really got to make this decision. Either you're going to stay in this cycle and bitch and moan about it. I mean, you could, but like, what's that going to get you? Or you can just make the decision to move forward. 
to let go of the conflict, to let go of the differing of opinion and just follow your soul. Okay, five of wands to the hermit. Follow your guiding light, follow your inner guidance system, okay? Uh, I wanna close this out now for you and I'm gonna move to my second new favorite deck. This one was sent by Stella. Oh, we're still recording. Okay, sorry. My, <laughs> sorry guys, my computer just totally went to sleep on me while I was recording this. I'm gonna have to fix that setting. Actually, it wasn't the computer, it was just the screen. Okay, anyway, um, this is my other favorite deck. It was sent, sent in by Stella, who has been a wonderful full support system to the channel for years, uh, but it's the magic of unicorns, all right? And I've come to understand that this deck um, really speaks to messages from your personal unicorn. So if you really resonate with me here on this channel, you know how much I love unicorns. I am a unicorn, thank you. So connect with your personal unicorn. Yeah, let's see what closing message we can get for you, Cancer, for the month of January from your personal unicorn. What closing message do you have for Cancer here? There it is right there. Yeah. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, Cancer, you've got card number 12, the freedom of truth. Communicate honestly be who you truly are and cancer i mean i understand i understand how this can affect you heavily but if that means that you have to be unpopular with certain people in your life give yourself the freedom and the self-respect to do that not because you're just you're trying to be con con contrary which i know sometimes you really like to do not because of that but because you're taking your power back because you're going through this character readjustment and you have every right to take this control in your life, okay? In order to do what is better or best for you, right? Finally, here you have card number 28, Pool of Christ Light. Open, up, open your heart and spread unconditional love, okay? So it's really about opening your heart here. Opening your heart to the change, the potential change that could really improve your life in some seriously magical ways, okay? Excellent. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you're new here, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. All of the information can be found in the description box below. All you got to do is just email me and let me know you're interested in, into, in, a, in receiving a reading and I'll get you all set up. My email can be found in the description box below, divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. I'm sending you all so much love. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes? Fantastic. Take care. Mm -hmm.